Chef Milani or a good cook will prepare food in front of the computer. I don't know if you know how they work, but in the auto industry, they spray rubber under the metals of an automobile so the rain won't drive you crazy. Metal cars are insulated. Mm -hmm. But in order for a robot to do that, a man takes a spray gun and he gets under the car and he sprays the rubber and the unit follows him. It follows every move he makes and there's a program chip and they slip it in. You only have to do it once and the machine will spray the rubber on every part of the car, just like a man does. Mm -hmm. So if a guy puts Coke bottle covers on, you know, he has to do it the first time, but the computer picks that up, then you put the chip in and it does that. Yeah. You change the chip, it does something else. So you don't need to train people to do a uniform job. All uniform jobs are automated. Like, I don't know, if you go to Home Depot today, they're beginning to put machines in rather than a cashier, and yeah. you put your card through it, that does away with the cashier. Mm -hmm. If you carry that out completely, you'll see that eventually all industries are becoming more and more automatic. That means people won't have the purchasing power to buy the goods. That's the end of the monetary system. Yeah. Right now it's happening all over the world. Exactly, yeah. Moving towards this, that system, yes. um, you said... It has nothing to do with me. No, we, we're yeah. working on it. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> in the transition pe period, moving towards the system. There'll be trouble. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and some people are going to decide what's important and what's not just as well, important. Well, if they agree that they want the Venus Project, it'll come in. Yeah. If they don't, you're going to have trouble. Yeah, yeah. but th doesn't there have to be some kind of prioritizing? Um, well, if... if if those people that agree in world unification are working together, those that don't will be working elsewhere. Yeah. <coughs> There'll yeah. be many different groups. Back to Jesus, Mankind United, all that will come back. Communism, Socialism. We will be working in the direction of the Venus Project. And here's how they prioritize. First they ask what is needed first, mostly. Food and water. So we, that's what we concentrate on during the transition. Along with those learning how to implement these things. And so, in other words, if you build a factory and you turn out food, and uh, he, he turns out ingredients for the factory. So we build a factory connected with your ingredients that go into the food, the nutrients, not just the bread. He works on transportation of the food to all the cities. Well, if the cities look like they are today, transporting of food is a big, difficult job. But if you design your cities with centralized systems of distribution, you can distribute the food easier. You can't do it in these kinds of cities. People always invite us to their country and say, what do you think of our country? This shit won't work. It won't work in a result. You have to level the old cities. They were inefficient. When I was a kid, you, if you lived on the fifth floor, you had to walk up steps to the fifth floor. Today, no one. If you go up to five floors, you have to have an elevator. That's a zoning law. See? So what happens is we have to think in terms of the future. We don't. Every city that we design is not the best city in the world. It's the best we know up to now. Three years from now, the city will undergo change. So every so many years, we bring in the latest TV sets and slip it in the wall. The wall is designed to receive things, and we pull out the old radio sets yeah. uh, and radio and com communication systems. As they improve, we install the latest without a price tag. The reason we do that is the smarter kids are, the safer the world is. Mm -hmm. When I use the term smart, I don't mean intelligent tests. So I even, I'm going to try to tell you what smart means. The ability to solve problems. The ability to innovate and change. The ability to bring people together to work cooperatively. That's what I mean. Because not smart as it is today. High IQ, that's bullshit. If you have a high IQ, I wrote a story years ago where the world got in a nuclear war and about 40 people escaped in an airplane 
and they landed in the Amazon jungle safely. And they got out of the air and the natives want to know how smart we are. So they give us a test. They say, what kind of animal went by here? We say, went by where? They say, can't you see the parted grass? Oh, oh yeah, what kind of an animal was it? I don't know, look at the footprints. Oh yeah. How much did it weigh? I don't know. You can tell by the depth of the footprints, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which way was the animal going? I don't know. <laughs> the branches are broken in that direction. Obviously, they were, you guys are all dummies. Mm -hmm. Intelligent tests don't mean a thing except how you, what you've been exposed to. Do you understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is everybody clear on that? Yeah. yeah. That's why I want to make a lot of movies showing how that we're not intelligent, that we, as long as we have wars and prisons and police and jealousy and envy and serial killers, we're not intelligent. There is a way to do away with all that, that's in the schools. So in the schools, as kids are growing up, when they're 13 or 14, they have sex relations. Nobody says, you don't fuck until you get married. That's bullshit. You got a prick, you come out the day you got married. You understand what I mean? So, we have to let people be free, otherwise they're always looking at a girl's tits or ass or something because then we're brought up in scarcity. Mm -hmm. Of course, today today the world is a little different than it was when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. People didn't screw around. Yeah. That is, knowingly. Now, you didn't know about it. And they had whorehouses people went to, you know. But today, uh, you have to seduce a girl and the few she, she goes to bed because she wants to get laid. You don't have to seduce anybody. So it's so different in the future. It's yeah. hard. I, I can't get up in an auditorium and say this to normal people. They get mad. So you have to change your language and kind of feed it to them in doses, a little bit at a time. That's why we have seminars. If you guys already looked at our website, you're part of the way there. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you came because of addendum, you know, yeah. it means you're part of the way there. I can talk to you more directly. Mm -hmm. But if conventional newspaper reporters come yeah. here, it's hard for me to instantly say, God damn, you're a crude person, you know. Mm -hmm. I understand that too, so I have to edit what I say, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll say as much as I can get away with. We have to bridge the difference between you have people to and do you. That. Yeah. You have to do that too. Yeah. When you go out into the world, you yeah. remember the Arab that believed the earth was flat? Yeah. Yeah. If you were there yesterday? Yeah. Well, you have to do that yeah. with people. Yeah. You have to explain it in terms they can understand. Yeah. I never got a chance to tell people yesterday how I changed the Ku Klux Klan. And I never got a chance to because the time was up. The guy no, told me. But I will tell you about it if yeah. you want to know that. Yes. Now, what do you want for your question first?